What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. Get comfortable, have a seat, crack open an ice cold hot chocolate, microwave some TV dinners, and eat your favorite parts of each one. Think about how much you miss your ex and uh, how it sucks that she's with someone else now, even though you're the one who left her. Because you're afraid of being happy. And this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. All right, this story is called Two College Kavina for the price of one. I had two Kavinas who turned in crappy lab reports all semester. Like, very crappy lab reports. Oddly, they kept messing up in the same way and decided that I just wasn't helping them and wasn't providing any feedback, but never emailed me for help until after they emailed my supervisor to complain. It was weird that they did the exact same things wrong and both did the same method of complaining, but they were in different classes. My supervisor wanted to know why they were getting low marks on the reports and why I wasn't giving them feedback. So I sat down and explained why they were failing the reports. The following is a summary of a small number of problems they had. 1. Every lab report must have a sentence that states the purpose of the lab and can literally be as simple as, the purpose of this lab is to never done once by either of them. Two. Every lab report has to contain a table with the properties and drawings of the molecules used in each lab. No drawings were done for any lab, and they often just didn't include the table. 3. Certain labs deal with identification of unknown samples. Not once did they ever mention that, and their summaries never even used the word unknown or stated the identity of any compounds analyzed. 4. They had to draw several graphs for one lab and perform a few calculations calculations based on the graphs. This was worth like 30% of that report, is explained in detail in the lab manual, the lecture, and the PowerPoint slides used for the lecture which they have access to. I even took an extra hour to explain how to do this. They each had one graph out of six and no calculations in sight. The graph was done improperly. Five. They would mess up every calculation imaginable. Percent of starting material converted to final product? Oh, you mean dividing the amount of starting material collected by the molecular mass of the product from the previous week's lab, right? Calculate the theoretical yield? That's just the amount of product times the molecular mass of one of the solvents. These are taught in first semester chemistry. This is fourth semester chemistry. Six. Straight up not writing whole sections of the lab report required from day one. Ten weeks and four reports into the class, they would still not write something required. Seven. One of the data points given is the temperature range at which the compound being studied melts. It starts melting at, say, 120.5 degrees Celsius and ends at 123.4 degrees Celsius. This is done for every lab and explained in detail. They reported this data point as the max masses of starting material and of the product. Apparently, MP stands for mass of product, not melting point. The mass of the product is called mass of product collected. It's located before the melting points in the data sheets, and the melting points are listed as degree Celsius. You know, temperature. 8. One of them sent me a nasty email about me skipping class one week. It was Thanksgiving week. She lives in Plymouth. Yes, that Plymouth. My supervisor was basically shocked and asked why I didn't tell them to fix anything and why they were doing it wrong. Upon seeing the feedback I actually gave, she emailed both of them asking about it. Turns out they didn't even know they got feedback. Again, fourth semester chemistry. And every university class uses the exact same grading platform. And even after all that complaining, one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings explain explaining lab reports in detail and long emails detailing how to fix one report of their choosing to get a higher grade, they each didn't turn in their last lab report stating that I didn't tell them the due date, which is always one week after each lab. And I constantly sent emails explaining the due date for that particular lab as being non-negotiable. They're both pre-med majors in the honors 
college. Oh, snap. Someone recently discovered partying. <laughs> uh, I hope they get it together, though. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I burped. <laughs> anyway, uh, this story's called Kevin is Going to Get Rich. Damn, I'm seeing stars right now. I am a financial advisor for a living, and a lot of my business comes from referrals. I did business with a woman in her mid-40s, who then sent me her 27-year-old son's contact information as a referral. I should have known I wouldn't be prepared for this when she scoffed and said that Kevin Kevin needed some serious help with his finances. I agreed that I'd reach out to him. I figured maybe at the very least he'd do business with me later, or he would give me referrals too. Kevin and I agreed to meet the next week. He said he wasn't able to meet me that week because he would be really busy recording songs at the studio. Woo! Boy, it only got worse from there. When Kevin came into the office, I saw through our glass doors that he looked like he was trying really hard to get the door open. His feet were anchored at the base and was leaning far back with both hands on the handle. There was a sign right in front of him to hit the intercom button to ask for entrance. Okay, that's an easy mistake. I do that all the time. Like, who needs an intercom to enter the building unless it's like an apartment? Oh boy. Did I just like out myself as someone who doesn't go places? If so, I'm glad because that just shows how responsible I am that I was socially distancing since before the pandemic. I took Kevin to the building's cafe to get us both some coffee before we started our meeting. He got excited when he saw my Chase Freedom Unlimited card. He asked how I could hook him up with one because he thought that unlimited meant, well, having unlimited funds. <laughs> I told him that there is no such thing as getting a credit card with unlimited funds not true, and getting approved for a credit card depended on his credit score. Kevin said he could charm his way through the interview to get approved because he's a rising star of a rapper. He was stoked about getting a yacht, designer clothes, a Tesla, etc. Soon. Soon, okay. I began our meeting by asking what he does for a living. Kevin tried to say he was an entrepreneur, but I was finally able to get the solid answer of him working as a pizza delivery driver. I asked him what an entrepreneur meant to him. Kevin said he is one because he isn't watched while driving on the job. Kevin also claimed to make almost $20 an hour without tips. We also lived in a state with low uh, cost of living, so this was impossible. After asking him a few more questions, the exasperated Kevin wrote on my whiteboard that he was working two jobs, both as a pizza delivery driver, one paid $8 an hour, the other paid $9 an hour. He asked added the two to get $17 an hour, emphatically circling his math. What a guy. I asked him if his work offered a 401k. Kevin's eyes lit up as he said, Hell yeah, I'm finna be hella rich. I asked him how much he was contributing. Kevin replied, Nah, I signed up for five 401ks. That's what you do to get rich. It turned out that Kevin thought a 401k was $401,000 that you get in retirement supply by simply simply signing up for it. He told me to multiply that figure by five. Whatever the total amount was is his current net worth. <laughs> what? I asked Kevin what he felt would happen to social security benefits in the future. He said, I don't know. It's annoying to wait in line for a new card, but I guess my number stays the same each time. I advise that Kevin should just start by having a checking and savings account and getting into the habit of regularly putting in money he doesn't spend. He told me he already he had a checking account he doesn't trust because he thought the bank kept stealing his money. I asked what he meant by that. Kevin pulled up his bank account info on his phone. I saw his checking account balance was negative $346. Kevin insisted that he had $346 to spend today and $296 from yesterday, but his card kept getting declined. Basically, he didn't understand that he was getting charged a $50 overdraft fee by the day. Kevin also pulled out a Visa gift card. He said this credit card was junk because that wouldn't go through either. I asked if he called the activation number on the sticker. He said he thought that was just a pin number for the card. <laughs> oh my God. 
<laughs> I love this guy. Kevin couldn't understand that his car was in repo status because he couldn't keep up with his $300 a month payments. He said he paid $300 to get his 2019 brand new Chevy Cruze out of the lot. He has it to drive, therefore he owns it, right? To end the meeting, I agreed to listen to a snippet of Kevin's rap songs. It definitely wasn't made in a studio. It sounded like he pulled up some instrumentals of current rap songs, blasted it through his car stereo, and recorded it all through his phone. He said to watch out for his SoundCloud account. It's blowing up. He had a total of four followers and 15 to 20 listens per song. Throughout this whole meeting, I could not correct Kevin. Kevin would fight me on every single thing I tried educating him about. I didn't tell Kevin's mother how the meeting went. She did call me recently telling me that he's a lost cause. She hopes he gets it together one day. Hey man, a lot of rappers are pretty bad at music and a lot of things. However, also a lot of, a lot of bad rappers get rich and famous and lots of money. I'm not saying that all the rappers today are bad or anything. I'm not one of those freaking fuddy duddies, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't even need to say it. All right, this story's called Kevin asks where the frozen turkeys are on Thanksgiving day gets mad when I tell them where they are. Honestly, was originally gonna post this on Tales from Retail, but when I was telling my friend about the story, they said that this would be a better place for it, so here I am. I work at a grocery store that always gets slammed during the day of a major holiday, or day before if we aren't open on the holiday in question, because every other chain store would be sold out from last minute panic buying as well. I was just finishing up restocking what I could in the baking aisle, since that's where most of the demand comes from, and I was about to start getting ready to close when a Kevin came up and asked me, where are your frozen turkeys? Uh, they'd be in the frozen food section in the little bunker in the middle of the aisle. I politely said, albeit questioning why anyone would buy a frozen turkey at 4 p.m. on Thanksgiving day. They wouldn't be able to cook it fully unless they deep fried it immediately once they came home. And that was still a snowball's chance in hell. No, 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 the Kevin said. I don't mean those frozen turkeys. I mean the other kind of frozen turkey. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I said. Those are the only frozen turkeys we have. If you wish, we might have some hams in our meat department that are thawed and should be good by your Thanksgiving di- I don't want a stupid ham. I want a proper frozen turkey. Your hams are properly frozen, yet I see no turkeys. It was then I realized that he meant refrigerated turkeys, not frozen ones. Sir, we don't sell refrigerated turkeys. We only have the ones in our frozen section. Why wouldn't you have a good and proper frozen turkey? Kevin asked, infuriated by the simple information given to him. Popular chain superstore sells them and they're all sold out because they're a ginormous superstore while we're a much smaller grocery store, I explained. Now, unless you have another question, I need to get back to work. Kevin left in a huff, muttering something about how we lost a customer because we didn't sell what he wanted. I let out a sigh of relief before hearing someone behind me ask, Excuse me, sir, uh, where are your frozen turkeys? I nearly lost my head before recognizing the voice as my grandfather's, who apparently was listening the whole conversation while choosing a refrigerated ham for Thanksgiving dinner. We laughed for a while about it before I had to go get ready to close up the store and he had to go back to his house to get ready for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Your grandpa sounds like a cool dude. <laughs> uh, freaking frozen turkey on Thanksgiving Day. Freaking Kevin's brain was a frozen turkey. Freaking turkey. All right, this story's called High School Kevin. Okay, so I'm 22 now, and I probably will not forget this guy for as long as I have a decent memory of high school. My school was... Uh, it wasn't the best. In fact, we are one of the lowest scoring schools in the area, which probably explains why it was full of Kevins and Kavinas. But this guy was just something else. I had a lot of classes with Kevin at the start of high school, and for 
for some reason, all the girls had a crush on him. He apparently lost his V-card at age 10. I refuse to believe it because he was disgusting. One class we had was personal slash social education. This is for things like drug talks, sex ed, etc. One day we're talking about our dream jobs. Now, we're like 13, 14 at this time, and unfortunately for me, our teacher put Kevin right at the front, next to me so she could keep an eye on him. We go around the room and talk about the careers we want. It gets to me and I said something along the lines of maybe becoming an animator because I'm good at cartoons, just not realistic trying. Then we get to Kevin. The teacher just gives a heavy sigh when she says it's his turn because we all know it's gonna be gross or stupid. I wanna be a porn star! He proudly announces with the stupidest smile. I have the balls for it. So the teacher tells him it has to be serious. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sperm donor! That was the end of that. Same class, same seats. This time, we had to get to know our classmates, even though we spent two to three years with each other already. We had to write a small talk about ourselves and our family members. So I mentioned that I'm chronically ill and explain why it sucks, but when I got back to my seat, Kevin moves his chair away. What are you doing? I'm obviously confused here. I don't want to catch what you have! I'm dumbfounded. I didn't think think anyone could be so uh, stupid. It's not contagious. I was born with it. Don't ask why I tried to explain this because it didn't work. He whined until the teacher finally moved him. He stole a teacher's brand new iPhone from her desk. He got caught because he was the last person to leave registration that morning and he asked the teacher if he could see the phone. He did this because he wanted to get his girlfriend at the time a better Christmas present because he wanted everyone to think he was rich. That was almost sweet. Almost. Sounds like something I would do. <laughs> In drama class, he pulled out a used condom from his bag and paraded it around on his head. He wouldn't tell us where he got it from. The teacher caught him trying to tie it to someone's backpack and he still refused to tell anyone where it came from. Oh no. <laughs> Last I heard, he's a father to a girl from a different school. I don't think they're together anymore, but he also apparently bought a car even though he hasn't passed his driving test or even started lessons. This car was expensive. He thinks he basically bought a sports car. It's not. He bought a rundown car that I think is something small like a Toyota Yaris. It's covered in rust and the whole thing is probably gonna fall apart the minute anyone tries to start the engine. From what I've heard, he's still as stupid, which is a miracle that he had a child. No, that explains it. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He still says he's gonna be a porn star, even though he thinks OnlyFans is gross. I really hope I never run into this guy again, because I might just end up slamming my head into a desk. Hey, whenever I get frustrated or annoyed or whatever, I too repeatedly bash my head until it transforms into a desk. <laughs> All right, this story's called Brief Meeting with a Kevin. So a friend and I were waiting to leave the, I don't know what that is. Let's see, let's fill in the letters. Um, Wilmort. Okay, so a friend and I were waiting to leave the Wilmort. We got held up by someone blocking the way out, trying to take something without paying. My friend was looking at the poinsettias, so I thought I would take a brief PSA to those waiting. For those with pets that eat plants, you might want to avoid buying poinsettias setters, they are poisonous. The worker Kevin jumps away from the plants. They have me standing next to these things? Am I gonna die? Me just looking at them. Only if you start snacking on them. <laughs> That's a cute story. Also, I've never met anyone that would do that, really. Like, uh, make a PSA about things. I don't know, most people are shy. Anyway, all I'm saying is hot. <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.